So my, my grandfather planted grapes here in 1885. Uh, he wasn't a winemaker, he had no experience in winemaking, but he was watching a, a, across the Rutherglen area and he could see that there was potential in the wine industry and there were very few grapes grown in Victoria at that time as well. So he thought it would be a good thing to get into and uh, his father supported him at the age of 18 to, uh, to get into growing grapes. So they planted uh, a small vineyard uh, and one of the varieties planted was musket to make a fortified style of musket wine. So that wine was made in an old barn, the Canadian barn that uh, a lot of visitors see as they drive into our site and they would, that's probably the, the icon that people recognise us by now, uh, a very steep roof old building and it was built for hay. My great great grandfather uh, built it to store hay and uh, get the grain from the hay later in the season. Uh, but a little bit of the hay was kicked out of the road to make room for the first vintage in 1889 and uh, that was the beginning of winemaking uh, of Brown Brothers in Millerwar. It would have been a small vintage, just the first harvest off the crop of grapes that was planted in, in 1985 and uh, there was Riesling and Shiraz amongst those varieties but, but uh, for the purpose of this exercise we're talking about the musket because uh, in those days fortified wines uh, were so popular. The, the barrels in the old barn are still there and uh, the barrels that that musket were made in, was made in, would still, are still there and unfortunately we can't go in there today because there are, are works being proposed to, to rejuvenate the old building and keep it in good shape. Uh, one of the barrels that's been used for musket for many years is this one sitting here behind me. Uh, it's a barrel that was built in Chilton back in, before 1900, sometime in the early part of Australia's winemaking years and it was made by a, a, a cooper called Sullivan and uh, it's easy to recognise his barrels because when you look at the barrels there's a, there's a, a strong timber down the centre here that has the door cut into it and that, that piece of timber is made from carry rather than oak like the rest of the barrel. All these staves here and, and the rest of the heads uh, are made from oak. And, uh, Sullivan used to service the, the wine industry in Rutherglen and he had quite a big business and my grandfather bought some of his barrels and later on second hand barrels from other winemakers that were originally made from by Sullivan. So over the years the musket uh, has, has really gone along very well. Uh, Brown Brothers and the Rutherglen district particularly uh, has been noted worldwide for the quality of its muskets so right up there uh, at, at the top end. Uh, but now, of course, people don't drink much fortified wine. Uh, we've shifted very much now to table wine consumers, and whereas the fortified wines, including musket, represented 70% of our production, of Australia's production, uh, back in 1958, 1960, uh, now it's down to probably something like 4%. In the making of fortified wines, of course, uh, the word fortified signifies that something's been added to it. And yes, when you're making a fortified wine, you add alcohol. Firstly, you begin with the fresh grapes and add yeast and the, the fermentation begins and the yeast consumes some of the sugar. Uh, but then when, when there's still some remaining sugar, if you add pure alcohol to that ferment, uh, then the yeast turns up its toes, stops fermenting, and you protect the wine from any further loss of sugar. Uh, but at the same time, it becomes more alcoholic. Now, in our industry, the pure alcohol that you use must be derived from grapes and uh, that you need a distillery to be able to extract that alcohol. So we had a small distillery here and it was established in 1902 by my grandfather uh, and he made a practice of buying up second grade wine and poor quality wine from other winemakers in the area to recover the alcohol from it and use in his own fortified wines. And he used that alcohol in his muskets and his ports and his tokays. Then in about early 1940s, and I vaguely remember this, um, my grandfather or my father at that time relinquished the distiller's licence because it became cheaper to buy our alcohol elsewhere. And uh, when he did that, the customs department sent officers here to destroy the, the lovely copper pot and cut up all the lovely copper pipe work so that it couldn't be used. And my father was absolutely destitute to see this beautiful copper work being cut to pieces. Uh, 